All right, would you pay $180 for a paddle you can't play with in sanctioned tournaments? So this is the EV-116 from a small little company called Ronbus. Not Rhombus, but Ron Bus. No idea of any meaning behind that name, so don't ask me. Now, Ron Bus also happens to make really great raw carbon fiber paddles at really affordable prices of like, I think $120. This is the R116, which is one of the best value for the money paddles out there, in my humble opinion. But we will also be focusing on this bad boy right here. I wanna first state that this paddle is not legal for sanctioned tournament play, so that may already push you away from this paddle. But don't go away just yet because this material might actually be the future of pickleball and I personally find it really, really fun to play with. Here's some quick specs of the paddle. The paddle length is 16.4 inches with the face width of 7.4 inches, a grip length of 5.3 inches, a grip circumference of 4.125 inches, which is octagonal, thank goodness, and a weight of about eight ounces, give or take, plus or minus 0.2 ounces. The face paddle surface is made of this 3D relief pattern that is essentially just painted on. The core material is made out of enhanced EVA foam, pretty much very similar to the dyed in vice if you're familiar with that paddle. And the core thickness is 16 millimeters and it is an edgeless paddle. Now first, let's get into build. It's a bit tough for me to talk about the build since it's not like much else on the market aside from what I mentioned before like the diadem vise. I would say it's not as well built as the vise but it's plenty durable and good. I mean it's made out of a solid piece of EVA foam. I do have one of the earlier models and the paint on it can chip but honestly it doesn't affect its play. The handle shape is great and obviously you don't have to worry about any exposed polymer. It's a nice firm grip and uh, yeah overall I think it's built pretty well. Next let's go over touch and feel. This is interesting because this paddle and other EVA foam paddles play very plush and, and really soft. It's honestly one of the biggest appeals of using uh, paddles with EVA foam in its core. Resetting, dinking, dropping will feel very, very natural to you. Now what's not going to feel natural is the sound. It's very muted and quiet and honestly, I think if we want pickleball to grow and expand, this is the type of material that can potentially be part of the solution. Since the main reason pickleball is being kept out of certain you know, neighborhoods and communities is because of the excessive noise. I've actually seen photos of, I think a city or a neighborhood putting a huge boulder like on a pickleball court just so people like can't play on it. Now compare the noise of what typical pickleball paddles sound like compared to what the rhombus sounds like. That's a huge difference. And in my opinion, it sounds way better than your traditional pickleball paddle. Next, let's touch on power and control. Now I say that this thing is very plush, but honestly, this is one of the most powerful paddles that I've ever hit with. I don't think you've experienced power until you've played with the EV-116 or any other full EVA foam paddle for that matter. When you swing the paddle past a certain threshold of speed, the ball just rockets off of the paddle to a point where it could actually be considered dangerous. Like I would probably wear goggles like playing with this paddle or against somebody to play with this paddle. I think I'd actually be scared to get bagged by a ball coming off one of these from the hands of a solid 4.5 plus player. If you get a good look at a ball, you can attack with this with a volley or a decent roll, you pretty much won the point. Like don't even get me started on overheads. That ball is probably gone and it's, it's definitely not coming back. Now, when it comes to drives, I think this is where the paddle can be pretty hard to control. I do not recommend doing a full swing with this thing unless your technique is sound and you are aiming inches above the net. Like the margin required to play with this paddle is just really thin. Many of your balls will fly out if you don't properly adjust your technique. So yes, this thing is an absolute rocket and yet it still plays incredibly soft. Now you might be wondering, how is that even possible? Well, let me tell you how. If you don't put any effort into your swing or shots and you just kind of are just blocking balls, the, the foam does a pretty good job of absorbing the ball and that's really great for your soft game. However, this paddle acts like a trampoline and the harder you jump on a trampoline, like the higher you go, right? That's basically what the EV1 does. The energy return and the deflection all goes into the ball when you strike it. This paddle to me feels almost as close to a tennis racket as anything else out there. All right, next up we got spin. This thing has an interesting texture. Honestly, 
I don't think it has any real noticeable effect on the spin potential. What really helps this thing generate spin is the compression that the core of this paddle provides. The dwell time on this paddle is really high and it almost feels like the ball melts into it and gives you time to really shape the ball. With that extra shape, you can then impart some pretty good spin with this paddle. It's just enough to keep the ball in place sometimes is what it feels like when you're doing drives with this paddle. So is the paddle dope or nope? It's a nope for me. I really did enjoy playing with this paddle and the novelty of it. However, I like the option to play in tournaments and as much fun as I had messing around and playing rec games with this paddle, I just can't really justify spending $180 for a paddle that I can't go compete at a sanctioned tournament with. Now, if you are wanting to experience what it's like to hit with an EVA foam paddle, then I would definitely choose this over the vice since the vice is more expensive at $225. I do personally think you should at least try it out for a game by borrowing it from someone else to see what the fuss is all about because it is very cool. But it can also be not cool, especially if you are using it to play in a dangerous way, like trying to always actively hit someone with this paddle. Like you could actually hurt somebody and I don't know if you're doing that, just stop. Now I have talked with the owner of Rhombus and he is in the process of a few prototypes using some sort of EVA foam hybrid that he is trying to actually get approved. Honestly, I will be very curious to see if he is able to make that happen. Just the thought of having a paddle that has a more muted sound actually excites me. Part of the reason for that is because right now when I play indoors, it's, you know, at one of those kind of warehouses that are just kind of built. There's not a lot of soundproofing in some of those steel boxes where you play indoors. When you have really loud paddles that echo is actually kind of annoying. So having a more quiet paddle kind of excites me more than it probably should. Now, if uh, Ronbus is able to get some sort of EVA foam hybrid out, I'll be keeping you guys posted if and when that happens. Now, if you are not interested in a paddle you can't use in sanctioned tournaments, definitely take a look at Rhombus's raw carbon fiber offerings like the R1. Links and codes in the description below. Till next time, play better. I'm out.